Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing great. So this video is part two of my cabin crew 101 uh, video. In the first part, I talked about the basic requirements to become a cabin attendant. And in the second part, which is this part, I'm going to talk about uh, how to apply for the interview, how to give the interview, tips and tricks and what the interview is like and regarding training and stuff. So yeah, if you haven't watched part one, then just go and watch it first and then uh, watch this part two. It would be more convenient for you all and yes let's get started with the video so if you want to apply for the interview you do not need to apply online you do not need to upload your CV on any website or something like that you just need to do is you have to search the interview date the venue uh, of the particular airline and uh, I think it is available on their official website so you just need to search the dates timings and the venue and you can go for a walk-in interview I also went for a walk-in interview I did not upload my CV or resume anywhere I just prepared a CV and I just went <laughs> so yes if you know that uh, an airline Line is conducting an interview then just prepare your CV and go and also before going for the interview you need to have a full length and a passport size photograph in formals because uh, you never know if they ask you for your photograph so it's better that you get a full a full length and a passport size photograph clicked in formals so if you are planning to go then just go in formals and it will look more professional and when I went for my interview I wore a shirt skirt and stockings heels then I did my proper makeup and then I did a barn as well so it's gonna look more professional and that's like my personal opinion you can either wear a skirt or a trouser and you can either make a bun or you can make a very professional ponytail you can just straighten your hair up and you can make a very professional looking ponytail and your I think that just looks so cool and uh, yeah uh, the makeup that I wore for my interview was I just went for a normal liner with I wore I think a dusky pinkish sort of a lipstick I wore and in my final interview I wore a red lipstick so yeah uh, my personal suggestion is that do a professional sort of a makeup or what you can do is you can also do a sexy glamorous professional makeup like do a smoky eye with new lips and it's absolutely your choice also when you go for the interview they will check if you meet all the basic requirements or not they will ask you your age your they will measure your uh, weight height they'll check your eyesight they'll check if you have any visible tattoos or not if you have any scars or marks so yes they will check each and every requirement so basically in an interview there are various rounds there there's one round which is like the first round it's like a very uh, simple sort of a round it's like a personal interview sort of a round and if you get selected in that in like in that round they will call you for the next round on some other day so yes and then you have a group discussion basically when I went for the group discussion round uh, they just asked one thing to me and that's like uh, what's your memorable moment and it can be a good or a bad so yeah they ask like very simple questions and then there's this third round basically it's not a prop it's not properly a round it's basically to check your height and weight the company doctor will check your height and weight your eyesight your face and your hands and everything to look if you have any scars or marks the questions they ask you are very very simple they just check your communication and interaction skills and uh, you know uh, in i think first round the interviewer asked me tell me about your family and what were you doing before and uh, uh, where are you from and stuff like that just very silly stupid questions and you just need to answer all the questions in a very pleasant way and at the same time it should look professional as well literally they will ask you very simple questions they ask me about my family and my studies and I don't know like very simple questions which anyone can answer also they ask me like why do you want to become a crew why, why do you want to become a cabin attendant? So, uh, you know, you, you should just give your genuine answer 
if you are doing it for the for becoming independent then just go ahead and tell them if you like traveling if you have a passion of becoming a crew then just go and tell them because I've seen people uh, copying uh, answers from the internet and answering them in front of the interviewer which is like very fake so you know basically when the interviewer asks uh, like why do you want to become a crew then everyone is like I'm very passionate about traveling so it looks very cheesy and at the same time it looks fake so you know just try to give genuine and real answers and that's gonna really help you and as I told you in group discussion also they asked a very stupid question like what's your favorite what's your memorable moment or what's your favorite memory I think something of that sort so I told them genuinely and I shared a bad memory with them because see memory is not like always it does not always have to be a very good memory it can be a bad memory as well so I shared with them um, a sort of a emotional bad and good memory mixed okay so I shared with them and also uh, I think I was I was really scared at that time because uh, you know it was uh, not easy for me to speak in front of so many people uh, and at the same time in front of the interviewer there were like two people who were taking the interview but still um, I somehow spoke and shared my memory with them and in final interview also they asked very simple questions like the interviewer asked me what's your dream so see my dream was always to become independent in life and that's what I told her that ma'am my dream is to become independent in life and also she asked me about my family and my studies and where am I where am I from and also she asked me that why I mean you're so young why do you want to uh, become a crew at this age I was like I straight away told her that oh, I want to become independent I don't want to be dependent on someone else so yeah and also she asked me about you know uh, how will you manage your studies along with the job then I told her that I will do it by correspondence uh, so she was like okay she was like pretty cool with my answers so yeah that's all I answered and uh, yeah uh, just give simple and genuine answers and that's gonna really help you in selection sometimes they can ask like why this airline I mean why do you want to work for this airline so you should read few lines on the internet uh, about that airline before going for the interview so that you can actually decide if you want to work for that airline or not so yes after you get selected they'll send you to a particular place of their uh, you know a particular medical clinic to conduct all the medical tests like ultrasound and blood tests urine test and ECG and stuff like that they conduct a lot of tests to check if you are physically fit or not and in my airline they did it after the selection so it depends upon airline to airline if they want to conduct the medical exams before selection or after selection so yes if you get selected then they will straight away tell you that congratulations you are selected and come on so and so date for the next round but if you do not get selected they'll make an excuse like okay we'll call you if we'll get shortlisted okay we'll call you if you'll get selected and stuff like that so if you if you'll hear something like this then just don't waste your time and apply in an other airline i mean apply in some other airline so yes if you'll get selected then they'll allot you a base so base is uh, you know is a um, state or a city from where you fly my airline has allotted me Delhi as my base so they can allot you any base like it can be Chennai Mumbai Bangalore anywhere so after completing your training you have to move to that base so that you can start flying with that airline and it kind of becomes uh, difficult to stay away from family but if you are really passionate about this job then I think you have to do it see I am a girl who cannot live far from my family so I am very lucky that I got Delhi as my base because I am at my home and I'm doing this job so I find myself very very lucky 
so that was all about the type of questions that they ask now moving on to the tips and tricks number one is that you have to be presentable just dress in a formal way look professional look formal do not carry a casual attitude or a casual behavior uh, because that's not gonna help you be presentable and be professional that's I think that's the first tip that I can give you number two is be confident if you do not have confident in yourself then just develop some confidence because if you're underconfident that then I don't think you'll get selected because confidence is the main thing in this job number three is be loyal and genuine do not give fake answers do not copy answers from internet as I told you uh, earlier as well that people do copy answers people do search the net for questions so yes do not give fake answers be loyal and be genuine and that's gonna really help you and that's gonna really impress the interviewer as well the next tip is wear a smile every time on your face even if you don't feel like smiling just smile because that's the that's one of the main things that they look in you and uh, just smile for god's sake and because they'll check your smile as well i know it's a very stupid thing but yes they check your smile so wear a smile every single time when you give an interview so yes give answers with smile and confidence also you need to have a good body language you have to be poised because remember one thing you are there for giving an air hostess interview so you need to carry a good body language with you you have to be positive you have to look positive you have to sound positive and yes most importantly you have to be in poise now the most important tip that i can give you is that do not get nervous do not panic do not take stress and do not take any sort of tensions because it is just an interview and it's not going to decide what type of person you are and it's not going to decide your future stay calm stay positive and uh, i think um, staying calm and positive will really help you a lot because I remember my interview day I was like very very nervous and my legs were shivering like anything but still I faked confidence I showed them as if I'm the most confident person on this planet so yes uh, faking confidence is one of the best tips that I can give you if you do not feel confident just fake confidence just show the person in front of you that you are the most confident one so yeah that will really help you a lot faking confidence is the key according to me at least because that's what I did uh, and yeah last tip is do not give up at all because you cannot decide your future on behalf of one interview because that's what happened with me I gave an interview in an airline and I did not get selected because it was the first ever interview of my life so I panicked and uh, I was like literally my voice was shaking while answering so I did not get selected because I was not at all confident and I got disheartened because of that and I decided that I will not go and give another interview but then <laughs> I somehow managed and finally went to give interview in an other airline actually in my airline so yeah that, uh, and in my airline I got selected do not get disheartened if you don't get selected remember that there are so many airlines where you can apply so if you don't get selected in a particular airline always remember that you can apply for an interview in some other airline so yes I think not giving up is the main thing so yes do not ever give up and always try again so those were all the tips and tricks to give an interview and now comes the training part so the training is basically for three months at least in my airline and I think in other airlines also it is somewhere around three months so yeah the training period is for three months and suppose um, the training center of that uh, airline is in a particular state and you are from some different state then you have to come to that state and live there for three months and uh, at least in my airline they do not provide any accommodations for that so you need to stay on your own maybe on a rent or something so yeah the training is for three months and uh, in the beginning they teach you about all the terms and terminologies 
of an aircraft and basically there are various modules so yeah the first part of the training is all about safety and emergency and the second part is about customer service in my airline so uh, in safety and emergency they uh, teach you about the terms and terminologies and suppose um, if uh, your if the airline is flying an airbus a320 or a boeing aircraft then they teach you everything about that aircraft they teach you about the safety equipments and they also teach you about first aid how to treat a passenger on board if he gets a heart attack or if he's suffering from asthma or like various problems that that a passenger can suffer on board so they treat you to sorry they teach you to treat all those kind of problems and then they also um, teach you about the uh, various safety and emergency procedures suppose if uh, you know if you have to evacuate in a situation so they teach you how to save your life and the lives of passengers so with the, you know there are various drills conducted like ditching drill slide drill uh, fire drill so so that you know you can become a little confident if uh, situation like that comes so uh, there are various drills in ditching drill basically when the aircraft has to land on water and then how to uh, how you can save your life and your life and the lives of passengers and then they also teach you like uh, what if this situation arises then what will you do what you have to do what are your procedures and what you have to do according you to according to your procedures so you know they teach you about all of that and then after all of this they teach you about customer service how to deal with passengers how to solve their problems and stuff like that how to behave with them and how to interact with them and you know verbiages and stuff so yes that is the training all about and also you have a lot of exams and you have to pass all the exams and uh, if you not pass any exam then you have a retest and if you do not clear the retest then they will send you in some other batch so yes guys you need to work really really hard and i think you will get to learn a lot of new things and yeah it's going to be fun as well as difficult at the same time so once you are done with your training you start flying with that airline now comes the salary part many of you have asked me about the salary as well so in aviation salary depends upon uh, hours and not days so it depends how many hours you fly in a month and every airline has their basic salary of the month so yeah that i can't tell you because you know companies code of conduct and also remember one thing that it is just the beginning it is just the beginning of this journey of being a cabin attendant because uh, you know in the beginning uh, you are like oh i know everything i've trained i've been trained and stuff like that but when you actually go on board and uh, that life is a very different life in itself i mean every day is a new challenge for you so remember that this is just the beginning and yeah uh, with that i complete this video i hope this video was helpful for you and if you find this video helpful then please give this video a big thumbs up and also share this video with your friends if they also want to become a crew so yes if you like me and my videos then please subscribe to my channel it would really mean so much to me and yes i'm going to see you in my next video till then you guys stay happy and stay beautiful bye bye